What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials, pick up your premium membership, it is 50 cents a day. And also, do not forget to stop by CMPKits.com. Get yourself some loops, get yourself some MIDI, get yourself some MIDI chords, get yourself some MIDI drums, get yourself Arrangement Arsenal Volume 5 and stop struggling with arrangement. Get it and get it now. And also please follow me on IG. If you guys have any questions, IG is the easiest way to communicate with me at craftmaster three and follow the spicy sun Sp Sundays podcast available live on the MG, the future, uh, YouTube channel every Sunday, uh, jump in the, uh, j jump in the live comments and maybe you get a chance to argue with guru about, do you need hardware or not? Now today we're going to be looking at studio one, uh, 5.1 uh, the update came out yesterday the first point update of studio 1.5 and it's definitely an exciting one but what does it mean for the producers out there um, a lot of the stuff that you'll see out out um, in the update space has to do with um, the composers and that's and that's really cool it's nice that it's nice that if you kind of watch like how studio one has been rolling out you know uh version one and two they were you know just building the doll and the doll into a full featured doll um you know they really went after the the uh the pro tools market with the updates in version three version four they went after they went after the um the producers and the people who um um you know create and compose on the computer and version five it seems like there is a focus towards the live gigging musician and composers um so I'll bet version six is when they fully integrate like um, video and having a timeline that follows along with, a, um, you know, with, um, so, you know, so you could edit, so you could score actual, you know, syncs inside a studio one that seems to where it's to where it's trending. And that's, you know, that's really cool. Um, so as far as, as far as for music producers though, I mean, you guys, you guys know that studio one is definitely, um, my preferred DAW to work in uh, as far as, as far as like creating, you know, my samples and my compositions. Uh, and that is, it has a lot to do with, um, you know, with chord track and just the, and just the piano roll is, is, is so amazing. Um, some of the things that were added, you know, starting is this, uh, that I really appreciate. This is simple, but just having a search button here and not having to open up finder. That's awesome. Um, and also I didn't, I don't know when this was added, but I just, I just noticed this when you right click on a session, you can pull up all the auto saves here. Um, and, and it just anything that's a, that's a different version of the dot song, which is, which is really awesome. And then it'll, you have the ability to, uh, to show it in finder. So you can find the, uh, the folder really fast. Um, but if, if we go ahead and we open a new song and we go to our template, we'll be able to find some things that are um you know that are really that are really great and interesting i think the first thing that every that everyone is really excited about is the um retrospective record feature um so like one of the one of the things that you know if you ever get into um you know, a little, a little DAW trolling in a Facebook group or something like that. You, you, you'll have like the logic and the, uh, and the Ableton people, they'll be like, yeah, but you know, you guys don't have, you guys don't have retrospective record. And what it is, is you can go and have an idea where you're like, and say for some weird reason you liked that and you really wanted to have that back. Um, if you go into, if you go into your inspector, you just go right here and you press retrospective record. It's going to, it's going to come back with the MIDI that you had just recorded. And I mean, if you, if, if you, if you've been, you know, making beats or using a MIDI keyboard for any amount of time, you know, that there are things that happen when you're just hanging out, playing through a VST that will not happen again once you press the record button everybody knows that it is not up for debate it is a fact so it's nice to it's nice to be able to um be able to recall those ideas really quickly 
um, and get those back. That's probably that's probably the craziest feature that they added, right? So now um, some stuff that some stuff that I that I was really um, like to see was that now when you open the piano roll, if you go to this button right here, you can pull in your information from from the arranger uh, for, uh, from the chord track. You can't edit the chord track from here. I don't know if that's something that's going to be added. Um, but as you, you know, as you can see, whatever changes that you make in the chord track up here, um, appears, appears down here. And that's just, and that's just nice to, <laughs> that's nice to be able to see. So when you double click and you're going in programming your MIDI and you have your chord track up here, you have that reminder, you know, along from your ability to pull in your ghost notes from, from the back. So, um, studio one continues to become the hackathon 2000 when it comes to MIDI tools, man. Um, you know, from this to the automatic melody generator to the automatic chord generators, like it, it, a lot of the it, it's it's it, it really like ships with like Captain Chords and and all that stuff native to it inside of it, which is which is really cool. Um, the other thing, the other thing that's that's really major that is producer centric is the changes that were made to Adam. So if you you know, if you if you use your Adam right and you double click on it to to pull it up you'll notice now you have now you have four pages of commands which this is the this is a game changer because this is almost like having um like a stream deck or something where you can where you can have um these these four pages of eight commands right and to be able to, all you got to do is right click on one of them and you can assign a command and they'll, you know, it'll save. And it's the options that you have. Um, you're able to make so many different workflows, uh, depending on, depending on what you want to be at your fingertips, whether it's, you know, whether it's, um, you know, working with audio or whether it's changing, you know, changing the size of the grid, or, you know, and, and snapping to different things or whether it's, you know, working with the editor, whether it's uh, different event commands that you wanted to work with, right? Um, some of the, some of the really, some of the really powerful ones guys is if you keep on scrolling down and I definitely invite you to scroll down through this because you will get, you will get inspired for so many different fast workflows and you can have, and you can have, I remember it's eight per page. So you could have four different types of workflows per page, right? So you could go down in the macros and then you see how you see this, these are like the chord generating, um, macros. So <laughs> dude, like it's just, just so many different ideas. Um, the, the more that I look at it, um, you know, it has, it has macros to, to add a compressor, EQ, a gain trim, a, uh, uh, a, you know, a, a, a space delay. You can, you know, you can apply that. You can apply a scale. It has, it has an automatic feature. You can one button apply a reverse reverb. That's crazy. That is, that is absolutely crazy. Um, you know, being able to cut to new layers, being able to fill eight, which is, you know, fill two steps on FL studio, right? You can do that in one button. You can humanize in one button. You can set your legato commands, you know, one pad. There is, I mean, dude, you see how crazy this is. Change, you know, change the quantized length, change your note start length. You just keep going down. There's so many, so many of those macros and, it's just as easy as it's as easy as right clicking on it, opening this, clicking it again, and then you have it. Right. Um, and that's really. Oh, and they also added they also added four banks for the. Um, uh, for, for the fader. So, you know, you just you just select the fader. Right. I'm sorry, a, uh, an encoder. Like here, it lets you cycle through the tracks, but but now you can but now you can assign you could assign more of these. You could go through you go through different the different banks. It's similar to like what we have on NPCs, where you where you have the Q links. Only I don't believe on NPCs they're they're assignable. So this is you know this is huge, especially if you especially if you have an atom, uh, the functionality that it's that it's going that it's going to give you, um, you know for this or like or, or like an SQ, it's super powerful um 
and it's really it's really bringing you into the realm of working you know working with the doll where it's like almost like a control service a control surface and the great thing about it is is atoms are super affordable like they're like 150 bucks and now the way that the the way that it ships um programs like if you look at the if you look at the workflows that they have set up you have your you have like a pattern set up, you know, insert pattern, duplicate variation. So, so you can, you can make different variations. The next one is more of like, is more of like moving around, moving around the windows. Three is three is for three is for adding the different types of tracks, you know, working in the mixer, adding inserts, adding sends. And the fourth one is working, is working with audio tracks. So they kind of give you, um, you know, a you know a rough guideline of like hey look at the different types of groupings that you can do also now guys the the atom has scales so you, you know you you have your scales you just pick your scale boom you're in there um so this is definitely this is definitely a very you know a very exciting update for for studio one for studio one v5 um i can't wait to uh you know, I can't wait to cut off this video and actually use some of the stuff. So that's what I'm going to do, man. This is CMP with Craftmaster Productions Studio 1 Tutorials.com. You guys keep it simple, but do not be basic. And we will see you on the next one.